Well, ladies and gentlemen, the conversation around Stellar Blade is quite honestly one of the most interesting conversations I've seen in gaming in quite some time. It has such a duality to it between people who uh, want you to boycott the game because it is uh, censored. You have people who want you to keep the game, but to sign the petition to try to get it uncensored. You have people that tell you to keep the game, but they want you to remove your PlayStation Plus subscription uh, because of what Sony did, and they're blaming Sony for the censorship. You have people just flat out saying, you know what? I don't care. I just want to play the game. I mean, there is so many different conversations happening with this particular game, but the funniest ones of all are the ones that come for the gaming journalists or just journalists in general, right? If you want to call them journalists, I don't really call them journalists, but if they want to call themselves that, okay. We have an article here from Paul Tassi over at Forbes with a headline that reads Stellar Blade is now the highest user scored PS5 game ever, which is a bit ex excessive. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why does Paul Tassi think in his mind that this is excessive? Well, of course, you're going to have to wonder that he's probably going to tie this something along the lines of the culture war. He's probably going to say that while the game is good, it's not quite deserving of the ultimate score simply because culture war, right? Now, the funny thing is, you guys don't realize, or at least I should say these gaming urinalists don't realize that ultimately the review websites are meant to be a place for people to speak their mind about a game. And if this game has controversy then the only reason why they it has controversy is at the blame of the publisher and the developer there's no it's not like gamers go out there and start creating controversy on their own the gamers have to be mad at something and that is usually caused by what the publisher or the developer does so let's get into this article guys from forbes but of course before we do if you are new here just consider hitting that subscribe button i would greatly appreciate it and like the video to push us out into that youtube algorithm it says stellar blade continues its cycle of discourse that ultimately between culture wars and actual examinations of the game's quality and now it hit a very unexpected high watermark combining both of those as it stands stellar blade is the highest user scored ps5 game of the entire generation on metacritic elevating it above its strong but not stunning 82 meta score from critics it's currently at a 9.2 out of 10 which yes does tie it with cyberpunk 2077 ultimate edition and resident evil uh, 4 separate ways expansion however i'm going to consider it number one not just because of the 9.3 as of yesterday indicating it's at the high end of 9.2 but because it has 2598 reviews in compared to resident evil 4's 333 reviews and cyberpunk's 81 reviews it is way harder to maintain that high of a score with thousands of reviews now again ladies and gentlemen if people want to review this game for whatever reason well that's essentially what those review sites are for and it's not like people are being disingenuous you know a lot of these people who are advocating for the removal of the censorship on the culture war side actually genuinely do enjoy the game nobody's ever complained about the gameplay of the game nobody's ever complained about the uh, story of the game or about the world building or the combat or anything like that people have a gripe with what the publisher and the developer did in terms of lying about censorship that is where the gripe starts and that is where the gripe ends everything else after that simply has to do with their genuine thoughts over what the game actually is now you can say that oh the culture war influenced them to give them a 10 out of 10 score yeah you might be right about some of those but i guarantee you're not right about a lot of those a lot of people who are playing the game would in fact rate it pretty fucking high with or without the culture war nonsense a lot of people are into the souls like gameplay like myself for example a lot of people are into the whole uh action rpg genre a lot of people are into the whole anime asian style you know what i mean like a lot of people are into this stuff and i think you are under way under ranking what it actually means to people i know i know people like paul tassie are probably much more interested in more of your standard western developer game right where every character essentially looks trans i'm sure that's probably more of what he's into and while listen the game is going to have that kind of combat happen right now in terms of the culture war look what happened to hogwarts legacy hogwarts legacy was a fantastic fucking game and guess what that game was woke as shit 
absolutely woke as shit, but a lot of people bought the game because number one, it looked like a fantastic game. Number two, it had a strong IP behind it, which was Harry Potter, which a lot of people loved. And number three, yes, you did have a culture war aspect to it where people wanted to buy it to own the libs who were essentially trying to boycott the game because they were mad about J.K. Rowling. They were they were trying to boycott the game for no other reason other than J.K. Rowling. Nothing to do with the game whatsoever. And now you're over here complaining about reviews that have supposedly nothing to do with the game because they're culture war based but because it's on the other side now it's a problem uh and then it says that rearranges the all-time ps5 list from when i wrote it about last week stella blaze at a 9.2 resident evil 4 9.2 cyberpunk uh cyberpunk 2077 9.2 astros playroom 9.0 neo remastered 9 final fantasy 7 rebirth 9 the talos principle 2 9 baldur's gate 3 8.9 resident evil 2 8.9 marvel spider-man 2 8.9 while i said that last time that i did not begrudge the game it's high user scores this is a bit excessive i really do like the game a lot it's very fun solid 8 out of 10 and i do enjoy it so much that i am 50 hours in and in the middle of a new game plus playthrough i am sure a lot of people feel the same so then why are you questioning the high scores you already know here put it to you like this you already know that the culture war aspect of everything that's happening with Stellar Blade right now was going to put this game in front of a lot of people. It was going to get this game pushed in front of eyes that probably would not have been pushed in the first place. Once people got their hands on the game and realized how good it was, what's to stop them from voting this game a 9 or a 10? There's nothing stopping them. People are genuinely voting this game high because they actually like it. The culture war stuff, that's just on the side. That's like a, a cream, you know, that's like a, a cherry on top, right? Like that's that's just additive. But in terms of the actual game itself, yes, the game is fantastic. But people are trying to take the fight to the actual developer and publisher over what they did with the hashtag free Stellar Blade. And we're trying to get the game uncensored. It says, and yet I can't help but acknowledge that some of this is due to the culture war angle here, with a certain segment of the voting population giving its tens for what it represents with an unbashedly sexy character at its lead, something some of these people think is not seen enough in games now. Don't make me pull out a long list of how that's not true. Please. Can you please pull out a list of, a, of, of games right now that are readily available from the West that have naturally standard sexy characters? I'm not talking about your weird version of androgynous trans sexy that you're into. I'm talking about characters like Eve, characters that are not afraid to be feminine. Can you show me an abundance of that? Because I guarantee you it's not happening, at least not in the AAA sector. Maybe there's some indie games that have that that I don't know about. I'll gladly admit that that's a possibility, but in terms of AAA, yeah, no. Look at what they're happening to. Look what's happening to these characters, man. I don't even need to get into it. Look at what's happening to these characters, and you'll see exactly what I mean and what everybody else is talking about. Then it says, no, I don't think they are solely responsible for these high scores, certainly, but all you need is that sort of edge to push great reviews into an all-time territory with a few more points. It's easy to peruse the reviews and pull out phrases like no woke nonsense and literally how do you like that wokey people? Others say it deserves Game of the Year like Hogwarts Legacy did, which didn't even get uh, nominated because of some woke PR shit. All of this has to go 30 seconds of searching user reviews. So yes, certainly a good chunk of reviews contain some sort of sentiment like this. You know, what's to stop people who were going to review the game anyway, who happen to see the culture war nonsense and just want to write something stupid? Like, you know what I mean? Like these people, if there was no culture war nonsense, they probably would have wrote just something to do with the game, something simple, and just still would have scored it a nine or a 10. Like there's a lot of people who genuinely enjoy this game that are just doing this culture war comments to piss off people like you because they know gaming urinalists are going to jump all over it in the hopes to try to make gamers look bad. And then he says, again, it's a very good game. It deserves high scores. But yes, part of this is definitely some users trying to stick it to the critics and attempt to hold it as a victory over woke journalists or other developers in the industry. We'll see if these numbers stick over the long term. So again, guys, I don't think these numbers are going to go down anytime soon. I highly doubt it. Uh, it's amazing to me that people like this have no problems with review bombing when it comes to uh, people trying to boycott games, trying to trying to ban people uh, for playing a certain game. Look what happened to Log Hogwarts Legacy. You know, they're trying to dox people. They got no problems with that. But the moment you want to do a positive review, oh, that's just too much. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.